What is up, YouTube? My name is David Lee, and you're watching Asian with Cars. And we got Michael Tan over here with a very special deck. What do you call it? I call it LVMH. Just like Louis Vuitton, Moe Hennessy, this is a deck for a true connoisseur. A true connoisseur? Okay. Explain what does that mean uh, with the, all that LVMH. Okay, so there's four key engines in the deck. There's Lightsworn, there's Volcanic, there's Machina, and Hand Control. That's sort of the quick draw, Dandy Warrior kind of stuff. And the way, the sort of the genesis of the deck is, I really like Drill Warrior. I think Drill Warrior is a fantastic card. I think it's great against frogs, it's great against fairies, it's great against matchups where you don't have to deal with too much interruption. The big problem with the deck is you lose the Black Wings, like you you're, you literally will always lose the Black Wings. And you're really, really fragile to Royal Pressure, you're fragile to traps, and a lot of times your game plan doesn't work. So I brainstormed several engines to work with the rest of the deck to shore up the deck's weaknesses. I'm happy to walk you through all of them right now. Sweet, let's start. Yeah, so first L for Lightsworn. <laughs> Also for the two losses I got in Swiss, <laughs> uh, here's a Light Sword engine. I mean, it's pretty standard. Three Ryko, a Lila, yeah. and of course a Hamster. Yeah. Um, Lila was more of a meta call today because I felt like this this being a large Texas regional, um, there was going to be more back row heavy decks, more Black Wings rather than Frogs and Fairies. I was right, so Lila was, was really strong. Sometimes this is a second Hamster or maybe just not a card at all uh, because this deck's 42 cards. 42 uh, cards, you say? 42 cards. There's a lot of engines in here and a lot of goodness. And, and it also, hasn't stopped you in your tracks? No, no. I Basically, every hand, there's going to be a starter. So I'll walk through the rest of that right now. Have you had any dead hands in this tourney? Uh, there was one hand where I opened three shell, but I was still able to play out of it and win. And I'm happy to walk you through that later. All right, let's talk about it. Yeah. So next up, the volcanic engine. So the two rocket and the three shell. Shell is nuts. Every time you set a shell, like the, the game where I open three shell, I set a shell, and people will knock this, people will Caius this, people will Ryko this, because everyone thinks it's Ryko, but actually, it's shell. And this card helps you facilitate discards, it helps you facilitate other parts of your deck. It's a fantastic mill off of your Rykos. This card makes sure that you always have five, six, seven cards in hand, always. Of course, Rocket is basically just Stratos, right? He's Stratos, he's 100 bigger. Of course, the search target's not as good, but Accelerator, you'll see, is, is actually a really fantastic, fantastic card, and you can actually grab it from the grave, even if your right goes middle. That's actually awesome. Yeah. Oh, what else you got over here? Next oh. engine is the Machina. So, one Force, two Fortress, and three Gear Frame. Wow. So, like I said, why play one Stratos when you can play five copies of Stratos? Right, right, right. So, gear frame, not much need to be explained here. Really strong card. Right. Fortress. This card really shores up the weakness of the quick draw deck because your two worst matchups are Black Wings and Heroes, and neither of the two decks have a convincing out to this card. Unless, of course, games two and three, but we can talk about that later. Um, games one, and, and sometimes when they don't have Sidra, he can crash with Ab Zero, and that's a plus one. You, my favorite play has always been to ram it into an Ab Zero, pop another card, and this is one of the very few sort of cards in the game that actually go plus when trading with Ab Zero, along with, of course, Grand Mole. And of course, the One Force. I think you only need one. There's many ways in this deck to recycle what, uh, this, this one copy of Force, and you never ever want to see this in your opening hand, so that's why we're only playing one. What's your reasoning for two Machina Fortress? Um, because three is kind of bricky. I, I, I think in pure Machina, you might want to play three because you have other machines. This is not always dead in hand. In my deck, more often not, this is more, this is, you know, you hope to that you're milling this with your Rikos and your Hamsters and your Lightsworn stuff, or you're ditching it with Raigeki Break. Awesome. You don't really want this in your hand. Right. Sweet. What you got over here? These are generic good cards. I mean, you got to play them. Your like, bare minimums? You gotta play. You gotta play this. Trigodi is so strong in this deck because, as I mentioned, the shells always make sure you've got hand advantage. All these cards, my five Stratuses and the shells, always make sure you have a very stacked hand. So Trigodia, very very strong. And of course, there's a lot of level of variation in this deck. Uh, one game, I was able to ditch Dandelion from hand to steal Spirit Reaper to make it blow up. It was kind of a stupid out, but it still worked. Of course, you gotta play. Not, not much more to be said there. And of course now the H, the hand control slash dandelion, dandy warrior stuff. You know, I think these are solid ratios. I think a lot of people make the mistake of playing more than one debris dragon. I maybe 
in a pure deck that makes sense, but I think the Bree Dragon's actually one of the worst normal summons in your deck. I'd actually most of the time normal summon the Volcanic sort of engine or Machina engine over, over Debris, simply because he requires a lot of graveyard setup. Most of the time you're making Black Rose, Starlight Road, other cards are, are everywhere, even Book of Moon. I got booked once and there's nothing you can really do once you commit your normal to a Debris Dragon. If they if they just book your your guy, you summon Debris, uh, you summon Danny, you look kind of foolish. Um, Quick draws, of course, you know, heart and soul of the deck. Now I gotta ask you, what was what was this crazy combination you had? The synergy with debris and car trooper. Debris and car trooper. Um, gosh, I mean, I, I think this is kind of funny that people didn't know this, but debris can bring back car trooper. Car trooper, even though its effects are negated by debris dragon, you can still mill three for cost, which fills your grave up for avarice. Hopefully, mills you something good. Um, in this deck, I would say there's you know nine or eight cards that are considered really strong mill targets. Whenever I see any of these in my Ryko mills, my charge mills, etc., etc., I'm really happy. It's essentially a plus one. Awesome. Um, oh, and one other little cute synergy in the deck is with Plague Spreader and with uh, Shell, because you can... You can stack your shell on top of the deck, and assuming you have one shell in, in grave or, or more at least, you can just grab it back. So you're paying 500 life points for a free special summon of Plague Spider. I'm not going to lie, this is some 3D chess stuff I've, I've never seen in my life. And of course, rounding out the mo uh, monster lineup is Tukaius. Generic out to everything. You have tokens from Dandy. You've got your Ryko hamster stuff. So this, this just slots in really nicely. It's beautiful. Uh, let's go into spells. Charge. Uh, I think card path is right. You have to play this card. If you're not playing this and you're playing two hamster, I think you're just wrong. Uh, heavy, you gotta play it. Though, I actually cited this deck card out a lot against back row heavy decks because everyone's running Starlight Road. I, I think this card is actually dead weight a lot of times uh, in those you know set four matchups. So uh, honestly, this card comes out for traps done. Um, the one of Blake's Accelerator, this card is insane. This card's not once per turn. It doesn't pitch for cost. You can bait out negations. You can bait out destruction with this. Uh, there was one game where, and I'll, I'll talk about, you know, of course, you got to play three Avarice. Where I was able to out an entire board where there were four monsters on his end. There was a Gores, a 2500 token, a Brionac, and a Greffer. I was able to out all four in one turn with uh, the Blaze Accelerator because, of course, once you pitch your shell, you can search another shell, which searches another shell, which searches another shell, and then you shuffle another yourself one. back. Another one. Another one. Oh yeah, and then you 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 play your avarice. You shuffle back the two shells that haven't searched yet, and then you draw two more cards, and you search your shell again, and you're able to reload this one more time. So it's able to cl clear all four monsters in one turn at the low low cost of you know a thousand life points. I wonder how Jeff Jones feels about this right now. <laughs> crazy and of course the brain con i mean this never won me a game it lost me games because <laughs> you top deck it at low life but, but you still gotta play it it's a stable you still gotta play it and of course the one mst right of course uh lastly the traps i think a lot of quick draw decks don't play traps which i think is totally wrong um one because sometimes i see them play decree sometimes i see them play other you know like treacherous you don't have enough defense sometimes you're swimming naked your opponent doesn't have to respect you anymore and then they can go hog wild like i guess black wings for example you got to teach them fear and the way i do that is by playing i think you know the seven best traps in the game right judgment torrential one bottomless uh didn't have room for the second usually side the second to get certain matchups this card's not always great like it's not great against frogs it's not great against fairies so i think it's fine to hedge your bets at one mirror force of course and then the mvp today uh the two by geki breaks um there's so many good discard uh fodder cards in in this deck right fortress is really good so that you know next time when you when you norm something marking a uh, gear frame you can search your force to get back fortress the dandelions the shells there's there's no there's Again, eight cards that you're very happy to discard with right Gekki Break, and your hand's always full, so I never actually felt like I was minusing off this card. Now, here's my question to you. Why why Raigeki Break over Phoenix Wing Wind Blast? Um, the cards I want to out, I want to stay dead. Like, these Floodgates, um, you know, mainly Floodgates. Like, I, I don't want to play Phoenix Wing on the off chance, like, I want to hit a Floodgate, and they draw into it, uh, into it again next turn. It's basically as simple as that. Awesome. All right, let's talk about the extra deck. Sure. Pretty normal stuff here. Here's 
you know, the one Chimera tech aside Cyber Dragon. Uh, sometimes people are silly enough to leave their own Cyber Dragon on board. I'll normal summon Gear Frame and I'll contact it, get rid of their Cyber Dragon, and make this. Um, there's the Quick Draw Synchro Monsters, the two uh, the two Drill Warriors. I actually didn't make them very much this tournament. Mostly because my matchups were a lot of very he trap heavy cards, but against frogs, against fairies, which I played in long grind games, this guy is amazing. He's treeborn but better. He comes back every turn. He sh helps you sh sh cycle back your, your shadows. He helps you recycle back all the best cards in your deck. Uh, Nitro Warrior, this guy didn't come up, but he's 3,800. You gotta play him. And then Turbo Warrior. Against Frogs, this card's amazing. They can't target this guy with Monarchs. And anytime they try, you, you can you can attack over Stardust, you can attack over any Synchro they play. Awesome. Next, um, these are essentially the cards for Debris Dragon. Of course, I only play one Debris Dragon, so these didn't come up super often. But you have to play all these. Extra deck space is not super tight. I don't think these need any explanation. The one thing I will say is that people love to hate on Iron Chain Dragon. <laughs> this card isn't great. I'm not going to claim it's ever great. But against fairies and against certain matchups, they can actually, this guy can put in work. He can mess up your opponent's graveyard, and sometimes that's all you need. And he's a 25 beater. Uh, lastly, just generic level 8 synchros and level 6 synchros. You know, everyone knows these cards are way better than level 8 pool. That's why we play the Plague Spreader with our level 4s. These cards are nuts, especially with that little synergy with Plague Spreader I mentioned exactly. earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this guy came up, Dark End. Caius plus Plague Spreader is Dark End. That's the only way this deck can make him, but you know, he's too good to not play. It's situational. <laughs> it's situational, but you might need him. And then the one off Armory Arm Colossal in the off chance. Oh. <laughs> this will never come up. This pro this didn't come up for me today, and I've played hundreds of games in this deck. It's never come up. But in the off chance you've got Caius, a Dandelion, and a Plague Spreader in rotation, you can you can do the OTK. Lastly, Catastor, he's the best five. Awesome. Uh, let's talk a little bit about side deck. So, two Sidra. These often come in because they're machines. They work with Machina Fortress, of course, and they replace Quick Draw Synchron. Mm -hmm. Because Quick Draw, they're both level 5 machines. They do a very similar thing, except Quick Draw requires other cards to do its job. Cyber Dragon doesn't. So in games 2 and 3, when it's simplified game state, or you're expecting a lot more specific side deck hate, this card is a lot better. He also doesn't lose a DV, DDV, and most importantly, he's a light. Going with that, Chaos Sorcerer. I know it's kind of silly to see him in the side, but I have I have a good amount of light of darks, but when the side, Cyber Dragons come in, this guy suddenly is incredibly strong because I've got six lights instead of four lights, which just makes this card much, you know... Much more useful. Much more useful, much less much less a brick. Next, you know, incidentally, most of my other side deck cards are also darks. This, of course, for frogs and fairies. I've got a lot of tribute fodder between tokens and free stuff floating around. I've got the DD Crows, and then the one of Sirocco, because... Just to mess with the value and blackman players, right? Exactly, exactly. And if you notice, all these side deck cards are light and dark, so therefore they make Chaos Sorcerer a lot better. Absolutely. Um, the one of Soul Release, you never want to see multiples, but when you do see this card, it's very impactful. And then lastly, one light imp, because there were a lot of fairies and lights wins today. This is a nice, flexible card to have. Two traps done. I never saw these, but I think this card is way better than Dust Tornado because you can actually choose what card you're getting rid of what, instead of you know blindly dust shooting or uh, sorry, dust tornadoing. That's an old, that's an old school idea for sure. I love it because yeah. I don't see traps done that much anymore, and it's more dust tornado over traps done. Yeah, well. I mean, I think this card is also insane against Floodgates, because most of the time when people play Floodgates, they can't out their own Floodgate. They can't out their own oppression. But you can. But I can. And and what's more is, you know, if I summon a Fortress, or I summon anything else that gets oppression, this card negates it from the turn, and the next turn they have to out my my Fortress under under their own oppression. Right. Next, of course, two Compulse. Great against so many decks. Uh, Bayou Turbo, Heroes, uh, any silly flambell shenanigans. This card is this card's really strong. And then lastly, uh, because I made one bottomless, I'm citing the other. Again, I think this card is amazing. Uh, and, and a lot of other decks that weren't so tight, maybe I probably main two. But I don't think this card's very good against Fairies or Monarchs, which is why we're hedging our bets a little. Awesome. That's it. Awesome. Now, here's my question to you. It's a trick question. Why Ghost Rares in the main deck? Why Ghost Rares in the main deck? And and also in the side deck. In the side deck. Are uh, you trying to mind game your opponent? 
I don't think there's any layer of that. I, I, I like the way Ghost Warriors look. I know some people like to think, oh, this is maybe honest. They like to bluff all these other Ghost Warriors in, in their hands. But no, I, I just like Ghost Warriors. <laughs> That's awesome. There's no mind game behind it. Just, awesome. just good Yu-Gi-Oh. Awesome. So what was your what was your uh, tourney like today? Yeah, so the tourney went amazing for the first three uh, matches. I actually went 6-0. I didn't lose a single game between my first three matches. Uh, first first match was a classic sort of Blackwing deck. Um, you know, he didn't open so great. I opened better. Uh, <laughs> sort of the end of classic the Classic Blackwings. Yeah, classic sort of Blackwings when you don't open. Um, uh, Whirlwind is, I mean, the deck's just, I don't think the deck's amazing without, without Whirlwind. Uh, match two, Fairy, which I would argue is one of the deck's strongest matchups, because that deck's slow. My deck also doesn't have to play it that quickly. And slowly, you know, we were looking at each other, sort of staring at each other with six cards in hand, but I was able to explode faster than he did. In games two and three, I had the Light Imps and the uh, the Vandy's Fiend in order to totally shut him down. Um, but game one, you know, um, Drill Warrior was really, really powerful, because I don't have to interact with his floaters, and every turn he can accrue advantage for me. Awesome. Uh, match three was Vayu Turbo. Uh, that was another 2-0 uh, against someone who actually topped the last RBET, and I think he's uh, doing very well in this tournament as well. He's a great player. Uh, I think his name is Carlos. Shoutouts to him. Um, but I think Vayu Turbo is actually also a pretty good matchup for my deck because if, when you look at our engine side by side, we play many of the same cards. We play the same Raikou, Hamster, Kaya stuff, but my deck has a much better grind game than his. He's got... You know, he's got a good bevy of traps, he's got other cards that are, you know, totally valid and worth playing. But when push comes to shove, I've got three Avarice, I've got the Makita engine, and that, at the end of the day, that's a lot better than 2300 Vanillas, <laughs> or, or Armed Wing, or, or Armor Master, or whoever. Right. Uh, match four was another Vayu Turbo deck. I actually lost that match. Um, I don't like to blame my losses on luck, but I got Dust Shooted all three games. He didn't even side out Dust Shoot oh. one of the games. <laughs> So wow. that's it's it is what it is, you know. Um, but you know, we went to game three, still still did okay. Uh, down on the wire, you know how it is. Um, and then game five, I was against some version of stun, which would have totally destroyed any normal quick draw deck. Because he's got the macro stuff, he's got Ryo, he's got you know DD Warrior Lady, all these solid one for one cards. But my deck outvalues his. It's not your classic quick draw deck where you see macro, you see floodgates, and you lose. You've got, like I said, the Stratoses. You've got the Rockets and the Machina cards. These guys are 1900. Most of his cards are not 1900. He's playing DD Warrior Lady. He's playing, you know, Banisher of the Radiance. These guys in a one for one fight are just better cards. So you're just outplaying your opponent? I, I'm not, I don't know about outplaying, but I was outvaluing him for sure. I was playing better monsters. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and match five was a real heartbreaker. Um, this is against heroes. Uh, we went to game three, you know, back and forth. What was game two like? Game two, I was at 200 life points. I top deck brain control and then gores. I almost mounted a comeback, but... And then he, what was his top deck? Oh, that was game three you're talking about. Oh, it was about. game three? Game three was the, the, the game determinative loss. Um, we were again in a simplified game state after I crashed my uh, fortress into his into his app zero. He top decks another miracle fusion. I have a, 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 a force in hand that he knows about, so I summon back the uh, the fortress, and then he top decks Cyber Dragon oh. to out oh. my entire board. So, yeah. you know, the chances of that, I calculated somewhere between 1 in 200 and 1 in 300, but, you know, sometimes oh. your opponent just wants it more badly. Oh, right? Asians and Matt, go figure, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, who do you want to thank for this tournament? Sure. Uh, I'd like to thank all the guys who came with me from Locals. Uh, I flew in from New York, but I also partially live in Austin. New York. <laughs> So wow. I want to thank Sean, Nabil, Taylor, and Pedro all for coming with me. You guys are awesome. Really thanks for, for the testing. I learned a lot about the Diva Hero beat and Diva Hero Frog matchups. A uh, ton of fun. Um, and uh, I guess shout outs to you know the, the my flight attendant for being really nice to me, even though I had only slept for about two hours. Oh my god. A bit of a that's, that's some same pain I I'm dealing with that. I was driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was I was flying, but uh, no th shout outs to the flight attendant this morning. Absolutely. Um, in terms of the tournament, you know, this is my first larger Edison tournament. It was a lot of fun. I you know, to all my friends and everyone else, you should try Edison. I think there's still a lot of room for creativity. It's not just just Black Wings and Heroes. You can do really, really well with, you know, amazing car pieces of cardboard like this. And uh, lastly, I, uh, I was in the feature matches. I, I, I think I'm on your channel uh, playing against fairies. So if you're interested in seeing how this deck runs, do check that out. All right. Thanks again, Mike. Thanks again.
We'll see you guys soon. See you soon.